shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hi, Tamara. How are you doing? I'm good. I can't see you. Yes, I'm. How's that? There we go. There we okay. go. Okay. A separate and apart from the interview portion, what products were they using in your hair in the movie? Because you had some glorious, separate and apart from my own, <laughs> my own information. What were you, what did they use in your hair? Do you know? I'm gonna disappoint you. It was a wig. Ah. I know. I know. Um, but it was it was real hair. They they treated it so well. Um, but yeah, they actually used a tiny little, really really old fashioned um, curling iron, and they just did it one strip by one strip. And they it took them a couple hours to do it. But yeah, it, I can't say it was my own locks, but. Um, Oh, I'm yeah. so jealous because I kept watching the movie like, God, is it Miel? Is it Eva <laughs> Curl? Is yeah. It I don't know. <laughs> you know, well, you know, curly hair can be so temperamental. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, mine's mine's quite similar, just a little less like ringlet-y. Mm -hmm. like Same here. Like today, it looks like I have no hair, like barely any. And then tomorrow, yeah. it'll be massive. Yeah. Like a lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, thank you for your time today. I'm thank so happy to talk me. to you. I, in a, I enjoyed the film. I had a chance to watch it last night. So congratulations on your first, well, not your first feature film, but congratulations on the release of uh, Artemis Fowl. Uh, it, was, it was my first, first movie. First oh, film. congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you did a wonderful job. What was it? Tell me about it. What was it like to see all that hard work come together? I think it was really, uh, I don't know, it was so heartwarming, I think, because it's been such a long time coming. Um, if um, you don't know, it's been two years since we actually filmed the movie. Um, it got pushed last year, which is really, really upsetting. But um, yeah, I think it was definitely worth the push. Um, and I think it just turned out so, so well. And I think it was also like, relieving I could take a sigh I think I could just take a breath because it just it was so good I loved it that's wonderful I enjoyed your character Julia I love any role where I see young ladies who are smart and tuned in and there's just so much depth to them other than this how would you describe Juliet I think Juliet is a very level-headed strong um young but also very experienced um she's a very experienced young woman who is um very sporty she's trained in martial arts i think i think i could take the guess that she has been doing a lot of sports since she was very very young um and yes yeah, she just she has an amazing relationship with her uncle who plays the amazing talented non zonosi that's awesome uh, with the with the story of Artemis Fowl, for for people who are going to watch who don't know, it's based on a series of of fantasy books. Had you had a chance? Were, were you already reading any of those before the film? I know you probably dived in once you got going, but were you a fan? And what other types of books are do you do you enjoy? Um, so I hadn't read it before I auditioned for it, but once I had auditioned for it, I'd read the books, and honestly. Um, each book just got better than the last one so I had to keep reading um but yeah I'm a huge fan of them now <laughs> and um yeah and some of the books that I like I love Harry Potter I love the Harry Potter series I love anything to do with magic it's just I think it's just it makes me feel really really I don't know excited I love I love the idea of magic and you know fairies and all that um and other books um I have to say fairy tale books I think I, I loved um Oh, I'm forgetting its name now. Uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where mm. to Find Them. I read that. That was super good. Um, I have to say just all like fantastical sort of thing. Mm. Fantasy, fantasy books um, and adventure books. I just, I, I, I like that kind of genre. For Harry Potter, which house are you? What house do you think you are? I'm a Gryffindor. I know it's very basic, but I, I took the test. I took the test and I am, I am an official Gryffindor. <laughs> I have the cape and the whole jacket and everything. Do you do the, you do the whole cosplay? Do you, do you go to cosplay? Do you do, are you into it like that? 
No, but I, I really want to do, I really want to go to Comic-Con. I, I only have the cape and the wand because um, my uncle a couple of years ago took me to um, the um, Universal in Florida mm -hmm. and I just smashed out on everything. I was like, mom, please, please, can I get this, please? She's like, I'm taking out your bank account. So I mean, sure, you can, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Next up following now, the Artemis Fowl is out there. People have the opportunity to watch it on Disney Plus. It's available now. But you have another project that's coming up soon on Netflix, A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting. Tell me about that project. I understand you're going to be in all three of um, the, the episodes of it. Tell me about that project and about your character in that series. So, uh, A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting is a Netflix movie, and um, it's, uh, I played the lead role, Kelly, and the story basically follows Kelly um, through her sort of teenage year, and she is an, known as an outcast at her school, and is known as Monster Girl, because when she was young, she said she saw a monster <laughs> under her bed, and she, she got attacked by it, and no one believes it. And one day she goes to, for the first time, babysit her mum's boss's um, son, whose name is Jacob, and he gets taken by monsters. And she realises all of the monsters under her bed were real. And she basically has to team up with the um, Baby Sister Society to get Jacob back from um, the Grand Guignol, who is Kelly's enemy slash bad guy, um, played by the amazing Tom Felton. It, it's written by um, Joe Ballerini, and hopefully there should be, if we can, we could film some more um, movies. I think there's about three or four books, so I'd love to film some more. That's awesome. Uh, when you think of, um just your performances and just your journey of being an actress, who inspires you? I would have to say two of the main people who have inspired me um, and sort of I've, I've watched their journeys have to be, I think, Zendaya. Mm. I've watched her since her sort of Disney premiere and her sort of, you know, journey. And I think everything she's done has been so well thought out and so well picked um, and so creative. Mm -hmm. And I have to say Emma Watson because I love Harry Potter mm -hmm. um, and she's just a super inspiring person who I think uses her, her platform for good. Um, and yeah, she's just a very inspiring person. Mm -hmm. Where do you, what would you like to accomplish with your platform as you grow and um, your presence increases and more people become aware for you? What would you like to, to do with your platform, say, over the next couple years? Um, I think I would uh, obviously like to inspire people to sort of um, just sort of get them knowing that even if they are a young a young person they can do like start now if you know what I mean like even if it doesn't have to be acting just you know start what they're doing now they have more power than they think that they do um, and I think just to sort of make change, obviously everything that's going on right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, I've been trying to use my platform right now and use my voice and obviously as a young person and uh, knowing other young people who think that they can't do much about it, there's signing petitions, educating yourself about it, you know, just looking on other, um, you know, influencers platforms to see what they're doing about it. And you don't even have to go out to protest, it's just about you know, everyone coming together to get this to stop. And I just think that when more bumps along the road come, I just want to have my platform and use it for good and just be able to persuade people that, you know, the world can be a better place if we spread positivity and love and yeah. When you look at um, all the things that have been happening over the last several weeks, as a, as a younger person, what are your impressions? Because I, my daughter is probably about your age and you know her point of view is very very different from mine as an over 40 person looking at all of things what have been your impressions of what you were seeing and how has this these last few weeks changed you personally i think they've really changed me as a person and i think obviously being a 15 year old girl a teenager you don't necessarily know what you want and what you sort of it's basically sort of getting your ducks in a row when you're growing up you know what your style is and 
I've, I haven't really developed that yet, but I think seeing everything that's been going on, I think the Black Lives, Lives Matter movement has become really, really important to me because I think before now, obviously being a young person, being before the age of 14, your parents don't want to show you the awful things that have been going, going on. And I think I haven't been, you know, exposed to this. And I think now being exposed to it and seeing the videos and seeing people being violent towards people of my colour, I think it's just been really moving, I think. And it's really changed me as a person because now I'm just more empowered about it. I want to do something about it. I want to stop this. Whereas before I wouldn't have been as exposed to it, as aware, as caring. So I think it's just really important for teenagers my age and maybe just a little bit younger, just to see a video of someone, you know, experiencing this. And I'm lucky as I am, um, I, I've never experienced it firsthand. Um, and I know that some of my family members have, and it's the stories I've heard are horrible. So I think that it's so important right now to just use our voices, just to make change so that my children, my grandchildren don't have to experience this. Absolutely. And uh, for our younger audience, or e even our, our older audience too, who are gonna tune in and watch this, what, what, what advice would you give them for, for living, for growing? Even though you're young, you still have experienced things in life. So what advice would you give for pressing on, for pursuing your dreams, or just any life advice at all? I would say that everyone out there, um, you need, the first thing you need to sort of accomplish your dreams is to believe in yourself. And I think that hate and being mean and hating on people and just being genuinely, disgustingly horrible gets you nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to spread love and positivity and especially in the job that I do. And if you want to do this job, you need family. So surround yourself with love and people who support you. I know I have the most supportive family and I know that anything I would do, even if I did pick, you know, like a bad job or I know that they would support my choices and you just need to know that the people around you will support you anything, no matter what. And if they don't, then they're not, they're not worth it. Um, and yeah, you just need to surround yourself with positivity because otherwise you feel like you, you can't do anything. So yeah, that's what I would say to everyone out there. That's fantastic. One last question. Are you a TikToker? Are you out there TikToking and, and, and doing, you know, you know, doing all that what the kids are out there doing now? Um, I would say yes. Yeah, I am. Um, I haven't got like a big, a big site, like with like 12 million followers. I have a couple of followers, but, um, yeah, I am out there doing the renegade and the, the TikTok and the, you know, the whoa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm out there. I think I'm just, I'm just trying to have fun because obviously all, all of this is going on. So I think it's really fun to see the ideas people have come up with in quarantine. I saw someone fix a table with ramen the other day. I mean, I want to try that, but if I, I break the I've table, that too. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been this whole big thing about it. But um, yeah, I think it's just, I think that's one site that really spreads positivity. So it's, it's fun to see what people come up with in quarantine. And um, yeah, I guess if you can find me, that would be really exciting because I have quite a weird name. So challenge, challenge um, set, challenge right. set everyone. All right. You got to find her. Well, thank you so much, Tamara. I'm so happy I got to talk to you. Congratulations on Artemis File. We're looking forward to seeing Babysitter's Guide and continued success and stay safe and stay beautiful out there. Thank you so much. Stay safe. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye, -bye. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.